Until I saw this movie, I thought I was the only person in the world that had ever called up somebody to come over and kill a spider. Mm -hmm. I felt very vindicated. But in this movie, you were um, much less of a loser than you usually are. Does this mean that you've changed, your analysis has worked, or what? No, it just means that, that Annie Hall is a different kind of a film for me, and only because I had a different idea. You know, in the past, I've always tried to make films that were laugh machines, where you'd come in and sit down, and if you liked the film, you would just laugh all the way through it. Annie Hall was a film uh, based on real relationships in my life and uh, about love and the failure of relationships to work out and the failure of marriages to work out, but treated in a comic way and hopefully uh, in a way that would make the audience sort of moved at the end or cry or at least be in some way involved. And consequently, it's a very different kind of film for me. Well, isn't this about as close to the real Woody Allen as a film will ever be? This is real close, yeah. Uh, there, there's uh, many uh, occasions in Annie Hall where I've exaggerated tremendously because I wanted to get laughs. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made, you know, I've tried, went strictly for laughs and tried to get the audience to, to laugh at things. But there are also many spots in the movie that are directly autobiographical. Well, is this pretty much how you are? Have you been kind of goofing on all of us all these years and you never really saw yourself as a loser? Or have you really changed? Uh, I never really saw myself as a loser, even in my films. You know, the people used to say that about me, but I never saw myself as a loser. I saw myself as someone who always had a hard time, but who triumphed. In, in Bananas, I wound up with Louise, I mean, uh, marrying her. In Sleeper, I wound up winning Diane Keaton over a very big, tall, handsome, blonde guy. Uh, in Love and Death, um, I wound up marrying Diane, and she grew to love me, even though I died at the end, which is, of course, unfortunately inevitable. Uh, so I never saw myself as a loser. It's that people saw my movies and said, you know, in Play It Against Sam, even though Diane remains with her husband, she still really falls in love with me in the movie. And so I've tried to present myself as a winner. It just comes out like a loser. Now, I never saw you as a loser. I see you as very sexy. Well, I appreciate that made my day. <laughs> that means more to me than, uh, than a good review on my film or anything. Well, what do you think of as sexy? I, I mean, what, are you, what is to you a sex symbol, like a Two woman? Two women kissing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I don't That's know what's, what, what's sexy to me is... Uh, you, think, you don't think you're sexy? Me? No, I think Al Pacino's sexy. I think uh, Robert De Niro's sexy. That kind of, that kind of real wild-eyed animal... Uh, curly-haired uh, look. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's. How about thing. women? Uh, Diane. Diane. Uh, yes, I, of course. I think Diane is sexy because I was. I'm so close to her, and I was so involved with her. Um, and I always thought Louise, uh, my ex-wife Louise Lasser, was real sexy too. Um, and because uh, the, the, those, I have had real personal relationships with them. Uh, in a general sense, um, I find the oddest people sexy. I guess I do, too. Do you, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> do you, um, everybody always has this image of you as being very insecure. Are you nervous? Uh, I'm not nervous at this moment, but I, I am nervous in general, and I am insecure. Yes, and paranoid and uh, anxiety-ridden. That's true. And I thought I was in Annie Hall, too, in, in that movie. Well, yeah, but... Um, has your, do you feel that your, um, all your years of analysis have, have worked, or what? Uh, better for my analyst <laughs> than for <laughs> me. I mean, they've worked a little bit, but they haven't worked tremendously. I mean, I, they, they haven't really turned me around. What are the, there must be things that you've wanted to do. You play the clarinet, and you're, now you're in a comic strip. You're mm -hmm. the basis of a comic strip, and you've directed movies. Um, do you have any fantasies that you haven't done? Sure, I'd like to write and direct a heavy, serious tragedy, not act in it, but a write and direct one where, you know, a real serious movie like Eugene O'Neill or something. Any grimy. other crazy fantasy? No. Uh, oh, crazy fantasy? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to jump naked into a <laughs> vat of cold Roosevelt dimes. <laughs> okay. My fantasy, I'm going to do it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Montage will be right back. <laughs>